to handle this situation, we're going to be putting out some rodent bait stations. Inside the stations, we're going to be putting snap traps and baiting the snap traps with peanut butter and also poison bait blocks. So I'm going to show you exactly what we're doing, exactly what's going on and how I do this service. So we're going to set up first and then we're going to put the stations out. It's going to be pretty straightforward. The rats seem to be burrowing into the soil around the exterior of the home. Pop these stations open, JT Eaton rodent rock stations. I always keep the key on my literal truck keys. Push it in and lift it up. And inside you'll find the areas for us to put the bait and the snap trap. These stations are great because they look like rocks. So residential. I just, uh, Rat snapped my finger. You guys see that? That's a real thing. That's not a joke. <laughs> I was demonstrating how to set this trap earlier and didn't realize it was still set. <laughs> wow. You know, it didn't hurt as bad as I thought it would. I can't believe that just happened. All right, I'm not gonna stick my finger in this one because this one's empty. <laughs> All right, so four bait stations, four snap traps, and I'm honestly going to put baits on each one of these spears. So that's going to be four, eight, 12, 16 bait blocks. This should put a pretty damn good dent in this rat population. So. Let's do, let's do the bait first. Uh, we've got JT Eaton's peanut butter flavored rodent bait blocks. These are just my go-to general bait blocks. Perfect for rats, mice, and all of those normal rodents. So we just skewer them onto the ends right here. So basically we're going to put both the snap traps and the bait out. Some people just do one or the other. I don't see any problem with doing both. If there's a dead rat, you know, inside the station, that's not going to discourage them from feeding on the bait. If anything, that might actually help because the rat smell is already in there. We just don't want to leave the dead rat in there for an extended period of time. So that would be the only difference. If I'm just doing bait, I would normally extend the follow-up service to like two or three weeks out. But since I'm doing the snap traps, we're going to return one week later to clean them out, reset them, etc. So obviously this is amazing brand synergy. These snap traps fit perfectly into the rock bait station. So we're going to set each of them right there. They just kind of snap into this little groove right there. We're going to put peanut butter. You just put it into the little reservoir right there. I'll pull one up and show you the reservoir. Of course, it doesn't take much. It's not the actual amount, it's just the, just the smell. So the bait, Snap traps have that little reservoir in the middle, and that's where you put the bait, and you pull it open, and that's where the lever is. Stations, there are a lot of bait stations that honestly, the locking mechanism is pretty fragile. You know, if you don't pop it in just right, sometimes they'll spring open randomly, so these locking mechanisms are perfect. So let's take a couple of these back there. Well, let's just take one back there, and the camera, and... The rat activity is mostly on the other side of the house, so that's where we're going, to the other side. I don't think I mentioned this, but this homeowner has chickens, and the main problem here is that he's putting out um, <laughs> chicken food outside. Obviously, the chickens live outside, and there's just a constant supply of food out for the chickens, and the rats have found out that they, that they like this food as well. So this is a particularly challenging situation because there is another food source. So we're inside the chicken coop area right now. And this is a extremely, extremely active and heavy Norway rat infestation. He first noticed them over the winter last year and it's August. So it's almost winter again. So they've been here for a long time. Let's go over here first where, where I saw that live rat literally just running around in the daytime uh, right next to the chickens. They're cohabitating. And I know I've seen chickens eat mice before, at least on videos on the internet, but I think the rats are probably just too intimidating for the chickens to really 
care about. So here's the chicken feed that is causing, you know, el problemo. Um, but the rats are living in, well, they're living in multiple areas, but I have seen them running in and out of this pile multiple times. You can see there's burrows into this this compost pile right here, which obviously has a bunch of food in it in itself. Um, but the chickens are kind of scared of me. I'll let them pass. Go chickens, go. All right, so. Yeah, didn't run out. They probably know better than that. But let me show you the shed over here, which is kind of, in my opinion, looks like the big hot spot where the rats are nesting. So this is the shed in question. Um, rat burrow number one. There's another one over here on the side that's kind of filled in, but these are all rat burrows, extremely active right there. Another one going into the neighbor's yard, as I was talking about right there. There's another rat burrow. See down, oh my gosh, this area is completely filled with mosquito as well. See right there, that's a rat burrow. Down underneath, I can see another one back in there, see it? So let me show you inside the shed. Um, look at all the rat droppings. Those guys are honkers. There's another JT Eaton station uh, my other technician used last time, so we've been here before, but it's <laughs> obviously smells uh, pretty bad in there. These are rat droppings here, guys. They're big, um, way bigger than mice droppings. And these are all dried up, but there's some fresh ones over there. And like all that dirt you see, that's all rat activity. That dirt just doesn't just come from nowhere. It comes from the ground. There's probably a burrow entrance. Okay, I realized I forgot to set the snap traps. Oh, look at these sticky burrs all over me. Okay, I realized I forgot to set the rat traps. So let's set them and then not put my finger inside the trap again. You just push it down like that. Very simple, very effective. <laughs> I know I'm getting absolutely destroyed by mosquitoes right now. So now that they're set, we're just going to set them next to the rat trails, which is not hard to do. So there's a trail right there where they're running next to the house. We'll put one there. Definitely going to put some over here by the shed. Obviously, there's a burrow entrance right there. So we're going to set the rock station right there. Well, it doesn't really fit right there. We'll put it right there. And obviously, you want the hole next to the wall where they like to run. Grab another station. We'll set it over here. Right next to this very active. And then one last station we're going to set over by the chicken food. So this is a JT Eaton top loader trap that I used last time. See how it's kind of curved? on this side right here. Let me see if I can get the lighting right. You see that curve? That's from the rats gnawing on the station. They're just, it used to be straight and they just completely chewed that little semicircle into it. Rats and mice are always gnawing, chewing on things, whether it's food or not. The term rodent actually comes from a Latin word. I don't know the Latin word specifically, but the Latin word means like to gnaw, to chew on something. So. Rodents, rats and mice are always chewing on things. That's why they can be such a big problem, especially when they get inside your house, chewing on wires, stuff like that. So yeah, that's it. Thank you guys so, so much for watching. Let me know if you had any questions about how I did this rat service and I will see you guys again very, very soon. Peace.